What's up guys, it's a Cheapster here, back with another video, and today I've got somewhat of a warning for people, uh, especially going into 2023, just some stuff that I've been seeing uh, out there with the economy and the markets, and I do want to say, obviously, the preface this, I'm not some kind of like economic, uh, ec econo ec economist, I'd see, I don't even know the word, I'm not an economist, but I do like to watch this stuff and pay attention to what's going on. And um, I do kind of feel like I've picked up on some type of a pattern here that is pretty worrying uh, going into 2023. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about it. So the first thing I want to talk about here is uh, this is something I noticed the personal savings rate. So as far as I understand with this, this is the amount that people are saving of their disposable income. And you can see obviously here in uh, 2020 that shot up because everyone was getting the stimulus checks and stuff. Um, so that was actually kind of a crazy time for people. We got up to 33.8% uh, of disposable income being saved in April of 2020, which is nuts. That's not normal. But as you can see, it's kind of, you know, fluctuates through the time but it looks like we kind of have like it's six percent is kind of average six maybe seven percent or something and what you can see that has been happening since uh 2021 so it i mean since i guess march of 2021 we really had a drop and i think that probably lines up with about the last stimulus check we got um, somewhere around here and then there was no more stimulus checks after that so I think that's really where this has changed and we stopped having so much of our disposable income being saved in the country but what you can see is it's not only kind of come down to the normal rate which we would have expected after the stimulus checks uh, fizzled out and we were done with receiving those we kind of would have expected to bottom out right here we're at seven and a half we would have been back to kind of like the norm what we were used to seeing but no, we actually tore through that. And uh, in 2022, we have been tearing down and now we are actually at 2.3%. And also let me remind you that that is, as far as I understand this, it's the amount of disposable income, the percent that people are saving. So to me, that's pretty worrying because not only are we seeing that the percentage of personal income that people are saving, and this is also included in investing. This chart is including how much you're investing too, um, is not is going down dramatically. There's not much being saved or invested right now during these times. And something I would point out with this too is to remember also, obviously, this is disposable income and right now with inflation so high i think disposable income has really dropped too uh, because people have not been making as much in real wages because of inflation so this is really concerning because it means that people are having less disposable income and saving way less of it too on top of it so that's a much much less compiled onto much less. There's a lot of different things that you could look at out there for what kind of charts you could look at to see how the economy is doing or what you can kind of expect for in the future. But to me, this is a pretty big one because this kind of shows where uh, people are, your everyday person, what they're kind of doing, what they're saving, kind of what position they're in. And uh, that's not looking good right now going into 2023. But that also brings me to, okay, well, we're not saving much. Uh, what about debt? So that brings me to this chart, the household debt and credit reports. And uh, this one doesn't have as much fluctuation. You can't actually pull this around to see different years and stuff. But you can see we can go back here to 2008, which obviously was a terrible time for housing and you can see how much housing debt was out in 2008 and how crazy that is because we are just in 2021 hit the same amount of housing debt that we had back in 2008 so that shows how crazy overblown those markets were back in 2008 but something I am realizing here is this blue line shows how much the housing debt is and the red line shows how much non-housing debt is. So that would be credit cards and stuff like that. Um, and student loans, I think, are in this red line, which something really interesting to remember is that we still are not seeing uh, interest being charged on federal student loans. So that is not increasing in interest if people aren't paying them. So you would expect to see, okay, well, people... Even if people aren't paying them down a lot, there should be some people paying them down and that debt should be decreasing. Uh, but I don't think we're really seeing that. And actually, obviously what we're seeing here is I like to call this the stretch because you can see here you stretch away from the housing debt. So the debt's going up, but the credit card debt and all that kind of stuff is actually stretching away from the total debt and being becoming bigger. Uh, you can definitely see that here in 2018. It really stretched away. 
But what I'm kind of seeing here is it looks like we really are just continuing to stretch away because you can see right here in quarter three of 2022, we have $4.5 trillion in non-housing debt and uh, almost $12 trillion in housing debt. So uh, it's getting pretty heavy in debt. And like I said, without the student loans even gaining interest, that's a big concern. We don't know what's going to happen with all that stuff uh, coming up with student loan forgiveness and things going on with that. But of course, you know, I don't think that forgiveness is even going to change too much with uh, people's debt. It's still going to cause a lot of debt when the payments kick back on and people have to pay that. And if people aren't paying it because it's been so long since people have been used to paying it. I expect to see that that could get a lot worse on the non-housing debt. So that is definitely a concern. But the thing that I wanted to do, because I feel like, like I said, there's a lot of things out there that you can look at and uh, kind of see indicators of where you think the economy is going or where the market's going and stuff. But to me, debt and savings are two very important parts of indicators that show you kind of where the consumer is and what they're going to be thinking into this next year. And so that brings me to wanting to overlay these. And I did this myself, so it's not exact. Uh, I tried to do it the best I can. And because this one, uh, you can't move it around and actually line it up exactly like you can with this one. Uh, it might not be perfect, but I did get them overlaid to some extent. Uh, but basically what this kind of shows you is at the same time as the debt rises, what are we seeing with the savings? And you see some interesting things. If you go back to 2008, it's like, well, you had the debt rise and then the savings was very low actually, right? As we went into that, which I think could have been a bad indicator there where you can see we had low savings rates with high debt, which leads to a pretty shaky economy. And then obviously 2008, which had to do with all the housing crisis and all that stuff. But what I'm kind of seeing here, you can't look at the 2020 really because that was just, you know, the pandemic that was a, a abnormal thing that really didn't have to do with uh economic factors here but if you look at this it kind of feels like we're doing the same thing again where we are down on the savings and huge on the debt um so that is definitely a concern going into 2023 so what does all that mean well i think it kind of to me of course there's a million things that could change there's always stuff that can change but to me kind of sets in stone a recession of course this is not financial advice don't go sell all your stuff and say okay we're going into a recession because some guy on youtube told you we were but i think whenever you have a situation where the consumer does not have much money clearly they're not saving much and it looks like credit cards are being used to be able to pay for lifestyle to continue keeping things going if you don't know earnings reports for companies haven't been as bad as people have expected my thought is that people don't have the money, but they're just putting on credit cards to continue to live that lifestyle because people got used to it during the time with stimulus checks and everything else during uh, these past years. So I think that's really what we're seeing here is that uh, stretch away from the savings amount people have to the amount of debt that people have. Uh, and that's a big concern. You can see it, it did it around the same time we stretched away pretty fast. We kind of accelerated right around here as we accelerated down in savings. So that is not a good, a good thing to see. But what I do want to say about this. So as it looks like 2023 is probably not going to be a good time uh, in the economy. It looks like we probably will go into recession. People have been saying it for a while too. We've already kind of been into a recession depending upon who you talk to. Uh, but it looks like 2023 is not going to be a good time. And um, what I do want to say is, first off, like I said, don't just go out and sell your stocks and stuff and be like, oh, 2023 is going to be a recession because there is a lot more that goes on with that than you might realize. A lot of stuff gets priced in, and that's why we've seen a lot of pain in the markets, why we've seen a lot of things drop throughout this year. I think a lot of that 2023 recession has been priced in for certain stocks and stuff. Um, so that's where you can really get caught if you sell out and then it's like, oh, it's already priced in and it starts going up and it never comes back down. So I, I don't I don't say that you should sell out of things right now. But again, I don't say anything because this is not financial advice. But the 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 non financial advice that I would want to give you guys as the cheapster. And this is kind of always my advice to people is next year is going to be a lean year, I think. So I think um, I say it all the time at the end of my videos, I say stay cheap. And what does that mean? It means being able to have the flexibility to be able to be cheap and decide something. So I think that's super important for people to uh, just 
not be tied to, oh, we, we have to go out to eat like three times a week because I'm like, I'm just so used to that and I can't stop. And if I don't have the money, I'm going to put it on a credit card. Staying cheap is a mindset of being able to say, okay, I don't, I don't have the money today or stuff's going bad and I'm going to do something cheaper, like stay at home and eat a peanut butter and jelly. I mean, I, I love peanut butter and jelly, so I would do that every day, but uh, it's definitely good to make sure that you have that mindset and that you have that flexibility to be able to stay cheap if we're going to be going into times like these like it's looking like we possibly are um in my opinion looks like 2023 is kind of written in stone with this kind of stuff but like i said things can always change there's always other factors that can come up that can change things so that's also why i don't say you should do all or nothing bets where you sell out of all your stocks or you buy into crazy leverage stocks or anything like that you should take a more median approach to things but the big thing I would say in 2023 is be prepared. So cash up, make sure that you have a, a decent emergency fund uh, because 2023 can get messy, especially if you're in a um, industry like housing or just on, honestly a lot of industries because it could get messy for a lot of jobs. I think we've seen that the Fed wants the unemployment rate to go up because that helps fight inflation, even though they're not outright going to say that. I think that's kind of what is coming out. So it's going to be a messy time. Uh, in the markets with employment and stuff. So try to cash up where you can try to make sure that you have some money on the side for an emergency fund. And then beyond that, if you got to that point, try to cash up even more so that if the market goes down in 2023, things get messy, you can buy that dip because you can actually see here one of those things um, during the personal savings rate back in 2008 when remember this is like one of the worst times we've seen in the market in uh, modern history, people started shooting up how much they were actually investing i'm assuming because this is savings and investing and you can see that people kind of went back to that normal amount and actually before that they were really low too so it, definitely you can see people took advantage of that and did get in now we know 2008 was a rough time and a lot of people didn't and it was uh, pretty bad for a lot of people because they either sold out like i'm saying don't do that but i definitely think there will be some situations that you can take advantage of if you are sitting with cash right now because a lot of people are not going to be in that situation so so ending this the three things that i would recommend going into 2023 since it looks like we are going to have a recession one is to make sure you have some type of emergency fund so that you can at least be prepared make sure that you have flexibility that you can uh, start cutting your expenses and live pretty cheap if you need to and the last one is to make sure that you have uh, job opportunities and where you can maintain income. Of course, that's where I say stuff like, you know, DoorDash can be great to have, even if you don't work it uh, a lot or you don't work it much, even if you don't work it at all right now, just having an active account where if you lost your job somewhere else, you could say, well, I could pick up some DoorDash. Even if it's not great, you can pick up some money to be able to pay your bills, pay your mortgage so you don't go bankrupt or have to foreclose on your home or something. All that stuff is great just to have that flexibility and can really help you get through these times because like I said, it looks like it's going to get messy. Um, but you know, there's always a, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So anything you can do to have kind of that money and be in a different position and be prepared for that is going to be really helpful through it. But that's what I got for you guys now. I really hope that you take some of this to heart and uh, start to kind of prepare because yeah, I think it's going to be messy and I, I want to see as little people get hurt by this uh, as possible, because like I said, you know, we've had the 2008 crash. I'm not saying that this necessarily is going to be like that. I mean, who knows, but I, th I think it is going to get pretty messy and I uh, definitely want people to be prepared and protected from, um, you know, stuff like bankruptcy and losing their jobs and whatever else. So thank you guys for watching the video. If you guys liked it, remember to tap that like button and also subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next one. And remember even more importantly than ever, stay cheap. that money. Don't you be spending it now. You're still here watching this? You might as well just subscribe. Why would you not at this point? <laughs>